Okay, in this video we're going to talk about the work energy theorem. And the work energy theorem formalizes a lot of the things we were talking about with work and its relationship to energy, right? The work energy theorem. So if you recall from the last video, we had two boats and they were on a frictionless surface and they were being propelled by wind. It was the same wind, so the same force. And I asked you which one would have more kinetic energy when they crossed the finish line if boat A had twice the mass of boat B. Right, so we know just from kind of Newtonian stuff that boat A has more mass, so when the same force is applied to it, it won't accelerate as much. And so it's not going to go as fast. And so both boats are going to take different amounts of time to finish to finish the race, to go this distance D. But I'm not really asking you how much time it's going to take them. I'm asking you which one has more kinetic energy. And we said that they're actually the they will have the same kinetic energy when they cross the finish line because the same amount of work is done on each one. Right? The same force, this force from the wind, is applied over the same distance, which is the distance to the finish line. So the same amount of energy is transferred to both boats. And if they both start with zero kinetic energy because they're at rest, then whatever energy they get from the wind by being worked on will be their, their kinetic energy over here. So this will be their final kinetic energy. And remember that the equation for kinetic energy is 1 half mv squared. And they're going to come out the same, which means that boat A, right? Boat A has a higher m, so it will have a lower velocity. And boat B will have a lower m, so it will have a higher velocity. And again, that makes sense when we think about the force and the mass um, combining to give us the acceleration. So if I were going to start to bring a lot of these ideas together, I would give you the work energy theorem, which is simply stated as the network done on an object is equal to the change in its kinetic energy. So let's unpack this. So the change in kinetic energy is going to be the final kinetic energy minus the initial kinetic energy. Final minus initial for, for delta Ke. And we know that kinetic energy is 1 half mv squared. So assuming that the mass stays the same, the kinetic energy, the final kinetic energy will be 1 half times the mass times the final velocity. And the initial kinetic energy will be 1 half times the mass times the initial velocity. Right? So this is just the, the long way to write this which is a slightly longer way of writing this. And when we go to the net work, right, this is saying find the net force and then multiply by the distance. And, remember, and just recall that the net force is kind of the sum of all the forces, right? So if we have uh, if we have uh, someone pushing this box with 10 newtons of force this way, and the force of friction is pushing the box with uh, negative 3 newtons of force, right, going the opposite way, and we do this over 2 meters, well, the net force is going to be adding the 2, so it's 10 plus negative 3. So the net force is equal to 7 newtons right in this direction and if we're doing that in over 2 meters which is also in that direction then we'll know that the work oh man take me home well no there we go we'll know that the network right is equal to the net force times the distance which is equal to 7 newtons times 2 meters so that'll give us 14 joules so, the work energy theorem, we'll go into this a little more, is really connecting the work done and how that object's motion changes, right? So just like the boats, the net work done is equal to the change.